Welcome back, folks, to the Get a Grip on Lighting podcast. On today's show, we have David Haley, the CEO and founder of Countify. And we're going to talk about something I really hate, inventory management. <laughs> yeah, I really hate inventory management. But So David is the CEO and founder of Countify, and an image an- analysis and data analytics company that focuses on helping hospitals, airlines, universities, and so on manage inventory processes more efficiently. Countify has worked with many companies that you will know, Delta Airlines, Iberia, Iberia Airlines, the Emirates Group, Duke Raleigh Hospital, North Carolina A&T University, to name a few. Um, before that, uh, David was a general manager at Delta Airlines. Um, he worked at EY, which I think is Ernst & Young, some sort of uh, mm-hmm. um, accountancy um, position. And so he's had a long career, and he's going to tell us about Countify. But before we get there, Greg... I didn't catch who's count who's who's uh, sponsoring this one. TCP. TCP. How could I miss <laughs> them? Come on, man. Go to tcpi.com, the craziest folks in lighting, Greg. That's right, and it's perfect for this topic today because a lot of us in lighting sell LED tubes, and one thing that's often overlooked is Kelvin temperature. Uh, oftentimes after the sale, you're like, all right, I sold them. Oh, no, now what color do you want? And then you have to figure that out. Not anymore. With TCP, they have their Type B, Type A LED Mm -hmm. tube that's color selectable, reduces inventory because it has three different color temps in one and makes it easy, peace of mind, so you can sell it, know that you have the color covered, and they are flicker-free as well. Go to tcpi.com. I go there every day. We use them every day. What a great company in the lighting industry and great long-term nailed member, Greg Eric. I mean, I think they're up there with the oldest. And, of course... Lots of information on color temperature and color tuning in LS Evolve. So if you're a lighting distributor out there, why not join Nailed? Go to NAILD.org, baby. That's right. But for right now, let's talk inventory, David Haley. It's the sexiest topic you want to talk about, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand why you don't like it. I'm so confused. So confused. <laughs> uh, if, well, if you, if, I would say if you, have, if you have inventory, you have inventory problems, period. Mm-hmm. Or in some type that's of right. issue with inventory, and that's why we started the company. And I think that's why we hate it. You know, Mike and I are both on the sales side of things. We also own our companies, though, so we do have to get involved in inventory. Um, and I see, you know, that you guys are committed to reducing costs by improving inventory management. And you did write in distributed organizations, so you work with distributors right now. Yeah, so we do, we do. Yes, we do work, work with some distributors as well, and so they they're the ones that not only you know, not are responsible for producing, but how can I get, how can I please my client, right? And I can get the products to to their clients, right? Mm-hmm. And so that that's, the middlemen are, are probably some of the people that are in the hardest places because they, they are just solely responsible for managing that inventory. And if they don't get it to where it needs to go, then they don't get paid. There you go. Mm-hmm. So what do you guys do specifically? So in, in a sense, what we do is we help instead of manually in, counting inventory, uh, we have cameras. So we'll install cameras uh, in, in our client's facility, whether it's in a kitchen facility for an airline, whether it's in a warehouse for a, a distribution center. And, and we also have a mobile app as well. So if you don't want to install cameras, we also have a mobile app that allows them to go around and take pictures of the items they want to mm-hmm. count. And what we do, they'll take pictures. Say you have... You have a pallet of LEDs, right? I don't know how many pa- how many LED tubes come on a pallet, um, but you have a pallet of LED lights, uh, and there might be four or five missing. So instead of having someone manually count and say, I, I need to make sure I have all 275 of those lights, those LEDs inside that pallet, instead there might actually be only 230, right? And so instead of having someone manually count that, it might take 10 to 15 minutes, you can take a picture with our mobile app or our installed cameras, and we'll count it for you. And so it may, it takes time away from that manual counting process. So this is a machine learning AI sort of situation, correct? And so does exactly. that work on, on receiving as well? So like you receive the skid, you can just take a picture of it um, and then put it away? Or how, how does it work on the receiving end? <clears throat> Yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's shipping or receiving. And uh, actually, so one of our one of our first clients was actually a lumber yard in Miami, and that's one of the things they used it for. Let me make sure I'm receiving my the lump when I receive the lumber, uh, receive these pallets of lumber. I take pictures of them, and I take pictures, and I make sure I received everything because we know, you know, having having 
the end using end user client can have a real issue with making sure they received 100 percent of the things they ordered. And a lot of times they might not have time to go back on that PO or that invoice and count every exact thing that's on that PO or that invoice. And so you can use our, our mobile application to take pictures of it. And if there's any type of discrepancy, now you have actual proof like, hey, this is the actual image that I received of the truck. So I have proof of what of what I actually received. So, yes, receiving and, and shipping uh, outgoing and incoming. You can you can use ver use our application to verify. So these cameras are, are set up and situated. Like, how does it work? I guess so. You have a warehouse full of lighting. We're going to take right now, and I might mm -hmm. have three, five hundred different products, different sizes, all of that. How are you going to set up my warehouse? I know you need to see it and all that, but generally, yeah. So in, in in the warehouse situation, we usually actually use the mobile app. So the 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 install cameras are usually the ones, and it really depends on the size of the warehouse. We can use the install cameras in, in, in the warehouse situation, but we've only used the mobile app where there's a, a person that's already responsible for, for counting these items. And so he or she might spend half their day going around making sure that we have certain certain items in stock or in inventory. And instead of spending four hours a day, they can spend less than one hour a day uh, with the mobile app going from pallet to pallet or going from bin to bin counting. And so it depends on these these mobile apps are custom built for for your situation, or at least the, the user interface will be custom built for your situation. Where if you want to enter the bin number, uh, you can enter the bin number or you can enter um, the and we can tell kind of what what it is once we, we train our, our data, or train our AI on exactly what it is. Um, but if you want to because bin numbers change, you know, where locations change mm -hmm. when you're allowed to. Take a picture in the bin number, keep moving. Take a picture in the bin number, keep moving. Then we will give you a report, a detailed report that says David counted on you know, February 3rd. David counted this. And then at the end of the day, you'll have a report or, or in, in minutes or you know, a little while, you'll have a report that shows everything that was counted. Are you familiar with the book by George Orwell called 1984? I am. I am. It's one of my favorite books, actually, in uh, in in middle school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like you should have called your 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 company Big Brother Inventory. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. Well, I mean, that's that's very true. We we do have Big Brother's always watching, right? Wasn't that the yeah. phrase? Big Brother's always yeah. watching. Uh, and so, yes, we we that that's very true, and we get that a lot in kind of the airline industry and other industries that we work in because no one wants to no one wants to always be watched. But we look at it not not as big brother, but we're adding efficiency, right? We we, we, we take the negative connotation and make it positive, right? Um, so add, adding efficiency to these processes is what we like to do. The, you know, because I, I think, you know, we're, we haven't really touched on it, but most loss comes from internal, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, I hate to say that, but, you know, there is shipping miscounts and stuff like that. But any major loss is usually some sort of internal or third party person who has access shipping companies yep. and stuff like that where the people have access to your warehouse so um can this software you know it, it, could it work where anything that goes out of your warehouse is photographed anything that comes into your warehouse is photographed and so that you can you can sort of manage that internal loss problem that maybe some companies have yeah it can and there's, there's a couple of ways that can you can deal with internal loss as well yes you can make sure that you're counting beginning inventory and you're counting in ending inventory as well, like on a daily basis. So your your work, your shipment, your, what was shipped out should be the difference of, of those two beginning and end. So you have a bookend on both sides. The other way we do it is trend analysis, right? After we have a week or a month or two months of data, then we can understand kind of what the overall trends are. And if there's any outliers over or under, we see that this particular, this, this particular skew for some reason on, you know, on on that Wednesday, where it's it's off by ten, or it's, or it's off by fifteen. You can look at those variances, and then you can ask questions about those variances. It might in that situation, it might not allow you to say yes, Scott stole ten lights or ten units, but it will tell you, hey, there's a variance, and let me ask questions about this variance. And so, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is really give you data, give you enough data to make more informed decisions. So I assume when you get a, a new product in, you have to do a starting point. So you take the picture and your app learns what that should look like. Is that how it starts? 
Yep, exactly. So if you say you have a and with 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 lighting specifically, I'm assuming they come in a box, and each box might have a SKU or a a SKU or a QRT code or a barcode on it as well. Um, and so we can we can learn kind of what that barcode does without without have to scan each one. We can take one picture can even count you know count thirty to forty to fifty different items inside one image. So you don't have to you know, take a scanning gun and scan each individual one. Uh, so yes, we will learn what that barcode will. I guess well step one is you will you will give us here's all our inventory. Right here's a list of the inventory we have, um, and then if you have the barcodes, good. If you don't. Doesn't matter. We can take a picture, take a picture of the items, and kind of learn as we go. Right. So in the very beginning, it takes uh, a, a couple of days to train our our computer vision models to learn what we're looking at. And after that fourth to fifth day, then we we've learned and we kind of understand what your inventory should look like, and we can start producing reports. So yes, to answer your question, we do take in, initial images uh, from the data you give us, and then we can we start producing reports. Okay, so then, and then as you add new items, you go through that process at the beginning, and then it's uh, much more automated down the line once you get more. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Once you once items are added, you know, it's just like you already have a you already have fifteen, you already have you know a hundred items in a, in on our servers. Adding one to two is not that big of a deal because with, with machine learning, you know, the computer gets smarter as it goes, and so the more images we have, the smarter the machine gets. Mm. The when your uh, sales guys are out in the field or gals are out there talking to customers, third party logistics, distribution centers, whoever it is, are they pitching this on an ROI sale? Like, are they sitting down with the person looking at some inventory reports, losses, adjustments, or whatever that's happening and saying, look, this is costing you this much. If you implement our system, we'll be able to reduce this by X amount and then also the productivity improvements of your staff. Like, how does the sales process work for the product? Yep, the sales process, number one, is kind of understanding what your, your, your current process is, right? How do, we, how do we understand kind of what your pain points are? Um, and tell us what you're currently doing to manage your inventory. Uh, what that usually entails is, hey, we have a we have a guy, we have a, a young lady that manages the inventory. He or she is responsible for this. He or she counts these items. Or a lot of cases we see no one counts these items, right? We're just kind of, we're, we're so busy. We don't have, we should have inventory processes, but we don't have inventory processes, uh. <laughs> right? And you're, you're laughing because you know it's true, right? True. <laughs> you know, a lot of people say they say they have a process, but they don't really have a process. And so what we do come in and say, so how much do you think you're, you're spending? How much do you think you're losing, right? Because a lot of times we can't tell you what, what you're losing if we don't have enough data. If we don't have the data to say, Yes, last year I spent four million on these these items, and I think shrink is is around five percent, right? A lot of times people are just kind of guessing, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have the actual data. So what we'll do is say, hey, let let us do a let's do a, a, a proof of concept. You know, let's come in for a month, two months, and do a trial and get an understanding of what your processes are, get an understanding of what you currently do to control control this inventory. And then we at least have the have a starting point. We do that with people that, that usually don't have don't have enough data. Because because I get it, you know, we're small business owners. We're trying to trying to make things things happen. Trying to make a dollar at about three cents, <laughs> and we can do that. <laughs> so sometimes processes get missing. Sometimes people are not always in the like you guys. People we're wearing many hats. Like you guys both, have, I need a hat on because I didn't I didn't get the memo. But you're <laughs> right. you're wearing it <laughs> next time. Um, yeah. So people are wearing many hats. So we do. Kind of start with a trial, so it's POC. Let's make sure that you you, you need this, you need these uh, these processes in place. And then once we do that, it is a cost savings. Like how much can we save you from mm. implementing this system? Mm. A lot of times we see is like I said, well, there'll be one person that's responsible for inventory. They might spend so many hours a day managing these inventory processes, and we can reduce their time counting. Right? How can we reduce their time? Usually we can reduce their counting time by you know. 60 70 percent in the beginning because they're not manually counting one two three four mm. they're going around take taking a picture next taking a picture next all right so it makes it a lot easier and you're taking the human element out of the counting as well all right so we know we've all been doing a full physical inventory and fat, fat fingered something or wrote a nine and it should have been a six or whatever mm -hmm. so we take those human elements out of it 
and make it a lot more a lot more big brother friendly, as you say. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you know, I was thinking about a friend of ours um, who has, I don't know if it's five or six branches, but he has a, this, it's a family owned business. They have a person in their company that all that person does is continually go from branch to branch counting inventory. Do you remember when we were in his warehouse and we're like, what is that guy doing over there? We went to all the, we went to all of his branches. He's like, oh, that yeah. guy just counts inventory all day long, every day. Right. Every day. <laughs> Every day. And I thought, holy mackerel. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not that, but I don't have, I don't, I'm, a, I'm in the branch. I only have one branch, right? So I got a handle right. on it. Right. But I couldn't imagine the stress of like multiple branches. And then you have some companies that have thousands of branches as well. I mean, it's, right. you know, of course. It's, it's a large problem. Yeah. What now do you, do you actually put, um, when you're, going to close like you're in there for the close maybe they maybe they call david haley it's a big client come on into the close with me do you have like numbers saying hey you guys are you know it looks to us like you you could say fifty thousand a year or one hundred and seventy five thousand a year or ten million dollars a year whatever the number is do you actually have a number on that saying hey, this is what we think you can save by implementing the system and then have you guys actually verified it after yeah so we have a client we have one particular client that we say yes we have just think about a, a operation that is, I don't have the best client's numbers in front of me, but a, you know, a four to $5 million ap operation or they were a $30 million operation a year, right? If you think about it, they close their entire operation five to six days a year to do inventory. Hmm. Think about it, you're closing your operation that long. I think it's, I think it was like $80,000 a day. I'm, I'm missing $80,000 a day in revenue from those, you know, those five, six days I'm being, I'm closed. Hmm. That's one thing. Okay. Next, that employee you're talking about, have an employee that goes around and counts those thing, items every day, all day. That employee might be a forty to $50,000 employee uh, that you're mm. that paying annually. All right, so we're already at, at, um, a, we're already at $300,000, $400,000 a year already just from closing the inventory, closing to take a full physical inventory, and that one employee. Right? We haven't even got to the loss, to the discrepancies you have with vendors and suppliers. Um, we haven't even got to those two things or theft, right? Loss, theft, shrinkage. So even with those two hard code tangible factors, mm. we're already at four hundred thousand dollars a year. So yes, that's exactly what we do. It's like here's what we here's what we think we can save you based on the information you've given us. And a lot of times we don't have to get into your shrink numbers, how much you're you think you're losing. If you're closing your operation any mm. any times a year, then that's the revenue you're not getting. And then you have an employee that's also doing that. So those two factors alone can pay for this. I love that point, you know, because, and, you know, just the, and, you know, I don't know what opinion anybody has about this, but just the lockdown environment that we've been in, in the last, um, uh, you know, two years, I was having a conversation. Seems like forever. Seems like forever yeah, <laughs> doesn't it? I, I was having a conversation yeah. with a guy and I said, you know, hey, you know, I lost a whole month, a whole month of January, this January's basically a write-off for my installation mm -hmm. department. And he's like, oh, no, don't worry. You're going to do those sales later. I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't not planning to be doing nothing in March. And right. the whole month of January is gone. And I think it's right. such a great point because how many of our vendors, Greg, will send you a letter saying, hey, we're shutting down for a week in June for inventory, right. you know, uh -huh. or we're shutting down for a week. And it's like, well, no, we'll get those orders later. That's not true. You do not, you, right. if you've lost that revenue for that day, it is gone forever. You never get it back. I totally agree. That's a sunk cost. It's a sunk yeah. cost. And you, you're right. You're never going to get that back because you're right. June, July 1st is its own other opportunities. And it's not, that might be some spillover, but majority of that time, that revenue is, is gone. I for totally sure. agree. So are you able to tie your system into people's accounting systems? You get the inventory counts right through your system, but then how do you get it to yours? Great question. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so we, we can we have direct APIs that we can link mm -hmm. with, you know, any any software that accepts an API, Oracle, SAP, QuickBooks, any of those that accept APIs. Yes, we can send the direct direct feed, whether it's daily, hourly, whatever the, the client wants, we can we can definitely talk to those systems. Uh, and is it a subscription type service or is it you buy it once and you use it forever? Yep, it's a, so it's a, it's a subscription service, a monthly subscription, the software as a service. Uh, like I said, we go in and usually understand what your needs are, understanding how big of, a, of an operation that you have, 
understanding kind of the, the images, the, the image uh, quantity that you want to manage per month. And that's what we base that subscription off of. But as I said, we, we, we show in the very beginning that mm-hmm. how, it, how it can pay for itself um, is very quickly. Just like I said, off those two things alone, usually it pays for itself within the first couple of months. Hmm. I did see on your website you have an inventory savings calculator, so you can actually type in. We did. Where does that calculation come, or how, how do you get up with come up yeah, with so, those numbers? Yeah, so it's based on it's based on your total amount of inventory, right? And it's based on kind of what what industry that you you've done. We've done um, we've done studies in various various industries, getting an understanding of the average of loss. Uh, that happens, and it takes t- together a bunch of those bunch of those type of factors. Now, it's it's a it's a ho- holistic, high level number, right? It's not your specific uh, because it takes about what uh, thirty seconds to complete, yeah, right? Sure. So it's it, it's not a it's not an Ernst and Young consulting job. It is a very <laughs> it's a very, it's a very quick high level of an estimate, but it gives you it just makes you start thinking like, hey, what? Let me think about how I what I could potentially be be losing. And that's all we're trying to do. Let's get the, the inventory hat on and say, what are we doing? What are we losing? What are our controls around these processes? And how can we try to mitigate some of those with, and make, make better decisions based off of data? One other question I had that, you know, with lighting, I think about, or even smaller components, a case might be 25, but what if you open that case and you take out five? Wow, how does your really- camera, how do your cameras read that? Yeah. So if, if you can, if we can see it, we can count it. Right. So okay. obviously if you have, if you, if you have the clothes, if with the, with the camera, if you have, if you've closed the box, we can't see any of the, any of the lights, right? If the box is open and we can, we can see one, what a full box looks like. Right. And then we can, we can, we'll, my, our data trains on what that full item looks like, what a box should total complete box should look like. If mm-hmm. anything is off from that, then we can, we can adjust it where we can notice, Oh, there's something missing from here because it doesn't look like our sample. And then we can go in and get more detail to understand lights usually have. I'm not as versed on the lighting, but I'm sure some of the, the filament or whatever it comes on the outside that connects to the to, it's not filament, whatever it connects to the to socket. the actual the socket. socket. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, and so if, if we can say, hey, we in a full box, we notice that there's 25 sockets. Right. And we yep. can count that if we notice there's only 19 then we can see the, the, the number that I'm missing. Which market segment are you guys strongest in? Uh, so we're strongest in the airline segment. Like that's where, where we started the company. Uh, we started the company for the airlines. Um, and granted, airlines are some of the toughest clients to deal with. Uh, mm-hmm. But we started there. We are also in the healthcare segment as well. So it's a, it's a segment that we are, are learning more and more about every day. Um, we One of our large, largest clients last year was a university. Uh, University wanted to get an understanding of uh, their dorm and residence hall inventory, so we did that project and 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 the overall di- distribution and, and warehouse center segment as well is something that that we're getting because we, we saw one problem right the inventory problem and it is a myriad of different industries that mm. that 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 affect those problems affect um, and so we we feel like we can help a bunch of anybody who wants to be innovative wants to save money, cut costs. We feel like we can, we can help them. It, it's interesting. Now I'm going to ask you a question about, you know, you are the founder, so not just the CEO. So you, it, it, you came up with this idea um, from your time working at Delta? Uh, EY Delta. Yeah, both of them. So I was, a, I was, while my time at EY, I was a person that did inventory counts at year end, you know, you got 12, 31 year end. I was the guy that they send on New Year's night, right? <laughs> New Year's Eve night. I can't party because I got to do an inventory tomorrow morning, uh, <laughs> year after year after year. And I was like, there has to be a better solution. Has to be a better wow. way. So, yeah. So, that's, that was kind of the, um, the thought process behind it. And then learning more. As I, when I was in EY, I was an auditor. Learning more about just overall inventory processes get to Delta, understanding the inventory issues from the overall airline industry as well is, is what caused me to start the company. The, so, so if, you have if the it wasn't, sorry, if it wasn't a party night, then you might not have started this company, huh? You're exactly <laughs> right. Exactly <laughs> right. If it wasn't, if they did their, their inventory on, on, you know, March 20th, I'll, we would not be talking right now. 
<laughs> I'm missing all the fun. I got to start a company. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Don't call me uh, on New Year's Day. <laughs> uh, you're, so your entrepreneurial journey. You're on this. You're on this journey, and you have the financial background. You know what the problem is, but you're not a machine learning AI expert, and you're not a software developer. No, what no. was that like? As but do you have a partner who's in the software, or did you hire these people? Like, how did you find out who actually knew how to do this? Because it's kind of black magic for people that aren't in that. Like for for a finance guy, an auditor, or a guy he's working inventory in a, a thing, trying to pick someone that knows how to create a machine learning algorithm is like oh, <laughs> black magic. Do you have a partner exactly who's right. strong in that, or how did you figure that out? Yeah, you're exactly right. So yeah, we have a team. Um, I don't have a partner uh, with with this company, but we I have a, a strong team of developers. Strong team of developers. Um, my lead developer is a computer engineer, PhD in computer vision, that knows how to write the code. Um, we have a very strong back a team of back end developers that runs our Excel models, links our APIs. Um, so yeah, it was not me at all. I'm not the brains behind the machine learning operation at all. Sometimes we have calls and I, I said, I might as well just turn my mic off because I don't have anything to add. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so yes, it, it's really about finding a team, finding a strong team, just like I'm sure with your business, you, we, you, you can't do everything. You can't do everything. Right. So you have to build a business on people that you trust and people that have the knowledge base to, to kind of execute, and get the job done. And so that's that's what we did. I, I cannot take credit for it by myself at all. It's the team is the one who real really managed the black magic behind the behind the box. That's gutsy, Greg Eric. That is. <laughs> That's something you gotta do to get it done. I like it. Hey, uh you gotta, I noticed you you also do a podcast. We do, yes, we do a podcast. It's not as elegant as yours, but yes, we do a podcast. Uh yeah, we do a podcast and we talk to entrepreneurs. We talk to entrepreneurs. We talk to people who, similar to this, who you know either have started companies or or are leaders in their in their own field, um, just learning about kind of what they do. And then, of course, we weave in some the sexiest topic of all: inventory management. We weave in some inventory <laughs> management stories in there as well. Um, so yes, it's called Counted Up. That's a great nice. name. That's a yeah, great name. Counted Up. David Haley, do you have any final thoughts for the Get a Grip on Lighting listeners? You know, Get a Grip on Lighting, I, I really appreciate being a part of this. Again, if you have inventory issues, if you don't want to count it and you need somebody to count it, please look us up. My name is D David Haley. I run Countify. It's Countify, C-O-U-N-T-I-F-I dot com. Uh, and it's also David at Countify dot com if you want to get in touch with us. But again, thank you for allowing me to be a part of your part of your show no man it was our pleasure i mean i think we, we're not doing enough of this i'm going to tell walker where did you find david haley because um our listeners want to know like all of our listeners are mostly management or you know people that are running or owning lighting distribution companies mm -hmm. and um you know this you i don't think we're doing enough of the business management side greg of of yeah. lighting distribution so when i saw your bio i was super excited to um to chat with you, David. But before the listeners leave, we got to get crazy, Greg Eric. You got to go to tcpi.com. That's right. The craziest folks in lighting, Greg. Reduce your skews. We talked all about it today with inventory. Make it easy for yourself. Instead of having three sets of types of tubes, you can have one. Change the color right on the tube itself and uh, make it easy. 35K, 4K, 5K built in. Type A, type B, single end or double end, flicker free. Oh, baby. Sounds good to me. And you know, the one thing about TCP, they have that login on their website. They got tons of inventory, man. They got lots of stock. So they're a great, great partner. If you're a lighting distribution company, you got to have TCP on your line card. And of course, folks, what about LS Evolve over at Nailed.org? That's right. If you're a Nailed member, you can take advantage of all our wonderful educational programs, but specifically only members get to take LS Evolve. That's right. That is the ticket to ongoing continuous learning. That's right. So go to NALD.org, check it out. And of course, at the end of this show, we always tell you guys and girls out there that we love you. We don't have listeners. We only have colleagues that happen to not have a podcast. So thank you for listening and bye for now. <laughs>